A nail-biting overtime finish to their season against the number five seed UCLA. Let's go back to meet the heart of the team, head coach Natasha Adair. You celebrate the small victories, and I think sometimes people forget that because they want to get to the finish line today, and it, it's not. It's a marathon. Adair took over ASU's program in 2022 after Charlie Turner Thorne's two-decade-long tenure in the Valley. Adair has taken over four programs. I wanted to coach on, on the biggest stage and uh, have success on the biggest stage and, and put myself in a position to win a national championship. After going through a pandemic together, winning titles, and building a bond at the University of Delaware, Adair knew she needed to bring her playmaker across the country with her. She called me to come down here. Um, she knew I always wanted to play Power Five. She knew she knew my dreams is to go to the league. I want to be great. I want to be the best I can be. Like I just, it's like a path that's like it's a lonely path. It's a it's a struggle path. It's a path full of like trials and tribulations. They really see where you at, tests you mentally, physically. And I think that um, her giving me the opportunity to come here and when she called me, I thanked the transfer portal. I just broke down. After verbally committing to the University of Connecticut, where she would have been teammates with Olympic gold medalist Rebecca Lobo, Adair tore her ACL, but University of South Florida head coach Trudy Lacey still wanted to take a shot on a 6-2 center. She was more than my coach. She was, a, she was a role model. She was a leader. She was an example, especially at a time where there weren't many African-American head women's basketball coaches. So I look to her as motivation, as inspiration. Um, I, I remember having conversations with her on days that were hard. Um, just being an African-American woman and a minority. This relationship with Lacey helped Adair to coach her players up in their biggest moments. I think it was semifinals. Semifinals last year, it was against Townsend. And um, I, after I made the two free throws, she had um, pulled me aside. It's actually a picture I have it on my phone. She's like, she grabbed my face and she was just like, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. And in that moment, it just meant a lot to me because um, my freshman year, I asked her, did she trust me? And she said, um, not right now, you know, you still got some stuff to work on and all that. But I knew that I trusted myself and that's all That's all that ever mattered to me. But meeting Coach A and just having so much respect for her and like just looking as like looking to her as a mentor and stuff like that, I think it means a lot to me for, for her to have trust me and for her to put faith in me. Adair has always ensured to give everyone a chance regardless of their age, rank, or standing. Just ask freshman starter Trayana Crisp. It started with confidence, like believing yourself because, you know, you're here for a reason. That's really what she preaches most. So just believe in yourself and know that you can do it. Coach Adair tells her players to be tenacious at all levels. Little did she know that tenacity would come in a pint-sized eight-year-old. And what did she do? She invited her to practice. A dare is not stopping with building leaders in Tempe, Arizona. She is building up women to be leaders of tomorrow in all avenues of life. In Tempe, Arizona, WCSN, Alexis Davis.